Today we will be learning about the meaning and issues involving child protection. The learning objectives for this module would be to understand the definition of a child, to understand the meaning of child protection, the need for child protection and understanding the issues involved, national and international efforts which have been made to ensure child protection, responsibilities of the state in ensuring child protection, policies and programs being implemented for child protection and some steps which can be taken up for child protection. India has the largest number of children in the world with 440 million of our population below 18 years old and exceeds 33% of our total population. By 2020, India will have the youngest population in the world. For our children to go, society has to ensure a healthy atmosphere for social, emotional and psychological development. Childhood is the time where a child needs nurturing, schooling, time to play and time to explore, the opportunities for emotional and physical growth. The concept of a child differs from culture to culture, hence it is necessary to know the universal definition of a child in general and for India in particular. Definition of a child and childhood Biologically, childhood is a stage between infancy and adulthood. The United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child or the UNCRC of 1989 defines a child as any human being below the age of 18 years unless under the law applicable to the child, majority is attained earlier. India follows this definition. To understand the concept of child protection, it is important to understand the technical definition of a child especially when the victim falls into the category of a child or when one has to decide whether certain concessions have been accorded to children. The concept of childhood varies as per various legislations prevailing in India. The following would help us understand the definition of age as per various um, legislations in India. Right to Education Act 2009 provides benefits for children up to age 14. The Hindu Marriage Act of 1955 prohibits child marriage for boys below 21 and girls below 18. Section 375 of the IPC or Indian Penal Code which protects girls up to the age of 16 but does not indicate any minimum age for boys. Child Labour Prohibition and Regulation Act of 1986 prohibits certain types of employment for both boys and girls up to the age of 14. The Mines Act of 1952 prohibits the engagement of children in hazardous work situations up to the age of 18. The Merchant Shipping Act 1958 protects children below the age of 14 years from employment in hazardous situations. The Motor Transport Act of 1961 prohibits children under the age of 14 from working in any motor transport undertaking. The Apprentices Act states that only children aged over 14 years and having passed the 12th standard shall be allowed to work as an apprentice. The Factories Act of 1948 prevents children under the age of 14 from being employed in factories. The Indian Penal Code Section 83 prohibits any criminal liability for children up to the age of 12. The Juvenile Justice Act as amended in 2000 ensures every child below 18 protection and prevention from child abuse. The Bombay Prohibition Act of 1949 prevents young children under 21 from consumption of alcohol and other controlled substances. However, the minimum age varies from state to state. And finally, according to the voluntary enlistment rules in armed forces, boys after 16 years can enlist with combat duties only after attaining 18 years of age without any specification for girls. Now we come to understanding why the concept of a child is important to us. Different, uh, differing ages are considered in different laws for a person to be declared as a child. As many situations arise where human rights, especially the rights of women and children are violated. Dealing with child specific offences for child protection purposes, any harmful behaviour to the well-being of a child should be prevented. Children are considered most vulnerable as they are incapable of protecting themselves. They lack maturity and are unable to handle certain situations unlike adults. Any form of exploitation, misuse 
or abuse of this vulnerable group is viewed most seriously. For instance, if a child is forced to work, it hampers physical growth and prevents the child from realizing his or her full potential. Not only does it stunt psychological, but also intellectual development. When one thinks about preventing child labor, the question of age of a child is crucial. But when the issue of child sex abuse arises, the age for giving consent for sex assumes importance. It is our duty to create a safe environment for all human beings, especially for children, but many children do not have a safe and secure environment. In public spaces, in schools, and even in their homes, they face exploitation, discrimination, and abuse. Ensuring a life of safety, dignity, and security to our future generations. Child protection is for every child, irrespective of their socioeconomic status, and they should be protected by social security and safety. The NGO Save the Children defines child protection as measures and structures to prevent and respond to abuse, neglect, exploitation, and violence affecting children. Protection involves maximizing the safety for deliberate and situational harm by appropriate and timely safeguards of children at home, in the community, and through basic service structures. The concept of protection ensures that all children have the right to grow up and develop in a protective environment in which violence, exploitation and abuse are prevented as well as mitigated and redressed. Now we come to some of the important issues relating to child protection. Protection is the right of every child, but some vulnerable children need more protection than the others. Children below 6 being innocent cannot protect themselves due to the lack of experience and the, as they are unaware of implications of harmful and abusive situations. Kidnapping of children is commonly for beggary, for organ theft, for pedophilia, for human sacrifice, child trafficking and a variety of reasons. These children need maximum care and protection from abuse and dangers. Some vulnerable children cope with these challenging situations but these challenges could be physical, mental, psychological or social in nature. Children with disabilities, children living on the streets with or without parents, slum children, marginalized children, children from socially backward communities and refugee and migrant children etc. fall into this category. Such vulnerable children are discriminated against and are deprived of equal opportunities such as schools and special education facilities that are friendly to them. The girl child in India is more vulnerable than the male child irrespective of age as she is not given equal opportunities and is discriminated against in homes and outside. The girl child is more likely to be malnourished and sexually abused and many are trafficked and forced into prostitution. Newspaper reports about growing incidents of incest indicate that they are not safe even in their own homes and there are cases of parents selling their girl children for sex trafficking and child marriage. There are other groups of vulnerable children as well who need to be protected. Chil child beggars, victims of child marriage, child prostitutes, child laborers, trafficked children, victims of child marriage, children in conflict with law, children affected by conflicts and disasters, children affected by substance abuse and children from families at risk. This is only an indicative list and is not exhaustive. There are some stressful issues that a child may undergo such as abuse. Abuse is the damage of an individual's human or civil rights through the act and actions of another person or persons. It includes physical abuse, psychological abuse, emotional abuse and mental abuse. In simple words, abuse means treated with cruelty or violence and is categorized as physical abuse, which can be either hitting, kicking, slapping, throwing, pinching, biting, or any kind of physical harm, or psychological and emotional abuse, such as using words or actions through which a child would feel insulted, calling derogatory names, negative comparisons, and not giving attention. Other forms of abuse may include neglect. Neglect means a person responsible for a child 
fails to provide adequate care and protection and fails to provide food, shelter, clothing, medical and dental care which places the child in a harmful situation. Children are also sexually exploited. Using a child to satisfy one's sexual needs or using a child for sexual pleasure which includes sex, uh, child sex work, child pornography, victims of pedophilia, etc. Economic exploitation. Economic exploitation can be termed in the context of child protection as using child labor for the benefits of the firm, organization with or without minimum monetary funds and includes domestic child labor, deployment of children for trafficking of drugs, alcohol, smuggling contraband, child labor, etc. Violence. The intentional use of physical force or power threatened or actual against a child by an individual or group that either results in or has a high likelihood of results in actual or potential harm to a child's health, survival, development or dignity. Now we understand a few of the international efforts that have been made to protect the child and India's commitment to child protection. Child protection is of prime attention at the international level and India has shown the commitment by ratifying in 1992 the United Nations Convention on Rights of Child UNCRC 1989. Thereby India has committed to take measures to ensure the survival, protection, participation and development of children. At the World Summit for Children in 1990, India adopted the World Declaration for Survival, Protection and Development of Children. Further, India adopted the optional protocols on the involvement of children in armed conflict and the sale of children, child prostitution and child pornography. India also reaffirmed its commitment to children by adopting the Millennium Development Goals and the objectives of a world fit for children. India is also a party to the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation or the SAARC Conventions on Child Welfare and Combating Trafficking of Women and Children in the SARC Nations. Some of the prominent provisions of UNCRC having implications for child protection are Articles 9, Family Separation, Article 10, Family Reunification Across Borders, Article 11, Illicit Transfers of Children and so on. There are a few articles in the UNCRC which are not protection rights but represent important approaches to securing a child's protection which include Article 5, Support for Parent, Extended Family and Community, Article 7, Birth Registration and Protection of Identity, Article 18, parental responsibility and so on. There have been few initiatives by NCERT or the National Council for Educational Research and Training. Some of the articles of the UNCRC of 1989 have a direct bearing on child protection. With a view to make the children aware of their basic rights, the NCERT textbooks of class 8 contain some quotes from the UNCRC articles in simple language. The Constitution of India also recognizes the vulnerable position of children and their rights to protection as under. Article 15 suggests special attention to children through necessary and special laws and policies that safeguard their rights. The right to equality, protection of life, personal liberty and the right against exploitation enshrined in Articles 14 through 24 further reiterate India's commitment to the protection, safety, security and the well-being of all its people including children. The directive policies of state, articles 39 E and F provide that the state shall in particular direct its policies towards securing to ensure that the health and strength of workers, men and women and the tender age of children are not abused and that the citizens are not forced by economic necessity to enter avocations unsuited to their age and strength. The children are given opportunities and facilities to develop in a healthy manner and in conditions of freedom and dignity and their childhood and youth are protected against exploitation and against moral and material abandonment. Article 45 envisages the state shall endeavour to provide early childhood care 
and education to all children until they complete the age of 6 years. Different ministries and departments of the Government of India have implemented various schemes and programs for the benefit of children. Some examples are, the Ministry of Labour has two major programs which are Improvement in Working Conditions of Child Women Labour, Initiatives to Develop Skills, Industrial Training Institutes and Elimination of Child Labour in the 10th 5-year plan. Whereas the Ministry of Women and Child Development has 10 major programs or schemes which relate to child protection. Some of them are Program for Juvenile Justice, Integrated Program for Street Children including Childline Service, Rajiv Gandhi National Crash Scheme for Children of Working Mothers, Integrated Child Development Scheme, Kishori Shakti Yojana and Integrated Child Protection Scheme ICPS among others. There are several important legislations pertaining to children child protection including the following. The Child Marriage Restraint Act of 1929. The Child Labour Protection and Regulation Act of 1986, the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection Act of 2000, the Infant Milk Substitutes Feeding Bottles and Infant Foods Regulation Production Supply Distribution Act of 1992, the Immoral Traffic Prevention Act 1956, the Guardians and Wards Act 1890, the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act of 2012 are some of them. There have been inclusions in the call for protection of children in the 5-year plans as well. An initiative was taken during the 5th 5-year plan to focus on child protection and the National Policy for Children 1974 came under this plan which shifted the focus from welfare measures to development of the child. Thereafter, in every 5-year plan, the Government of India indicates its concern and commitment towards child development and well-being. The 11th 5-year plan of 2007 to 12 stated the development of the child is at the center of the 11th plan and that provision of child protection is a key intervention of the 11th plan. There have been many initiatives for child protection at a policy level as well. India's National Policy for Children 1974 provides a framework for policy and planning for children. The National Plan of Action for Children 2005, Guidelines Governing Adoption of Children 2011, the Supreme Court of India banned corporal punishment for children on December 1, 2000 when it directed the state to ensure that children are not subjected to corporal punishments in schools and they receive education in an environment of freedom and dignity free from fear. Some of the recent initiatives have been the Commissions for Protection of Child Rights. The National Commission for Protection of Child Rights NCPCR, was set up in March 2007. It envisages setting up statutory bodies like a national commission at a national level and state commissions at state level for proper enforcement of children's rights. The rules for protection of child rights have been notified on 31st July 2006 and the National Commission for Protection of Child Rights duly constituted. Many state governments have also set up state commissions for protection of child rights. The commissions are authorized to initiate steps to ensure child protection and child rights. To name a few recent initiatives, Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Amendment Act 2011. National Food Security Act 2013, Rights of Children to Free and Compulsory Education Rules 2010, Rights of Children to Free and Con Compulsory Education Act 2009, and Right to Education Act 2009 ensures compulsory education for children up to 14 years. Summing up, this module has dealt extensively with the definition and issues relating to child protection and provides an insight to generate awareness and sensitivity towards child protection. The government has taken exemplary steps to promote legislation leading to child protection in various spheres. Based on the learnings from this module, you should be able to take some initiatives as follows. Develop self-awareness and acceptance regarding issues relating to children 
and need for child protection. Generate an awareness and sensitivity among family and society with different methods such as puppet shows, films, talk shows, etc. on various occasions and festivals. Establish a network with voluntary and government organizations working in the field to exchange information and prepare an action plan. Intervene on behalf of a child if found in a conflicting situation or a stressful situation. Educate various communities regarding policies and programs on child protection. It is very essential to continue educating ourselves and others because education is the only tool to protect our future generations from exploitation and injustice. Thank you.